So, hello everybody, my name is Andrew Phillips. Today I'll be presenting to you guys about uh, my research with uh, athletic institutional reputation and the way that relates to competitive success. So, I initially started my research really intrigued by this idea of athletic reputation um, in, a, in an individual. You know, we think about guys like Michael Phelps as like, when he's racing, everybody's watching because he is this guy who's just so good. And it's not only him who's good because in swimming and in every sport really there's a competitive scene all the way from small children competing with like a local swim club or a local sports club over the summer to adults and teenagers competing alongside the best of the entire world in the Olympics. But ranking individual success ends up being very intrusive because to get enough data to have like a full study I need to be very involved with one person. But I can't really do that because this is quasi-professional and it's only three months. So now I land on the idea of a team athletic reputation. Um, so I thought, why don't I analyze the Olympics? But the Olympics is a uh, nationality because you can't choose which team you compete for in the Olympics. You can choose which team you compete for in college. And something else is that in college, they uh, have very well organized databases. And so because of these two factors, I land on studying the uh, NCAA collegiate swimming scene. So my problem statement is that there are no research reports which discuss the reputation of a school as a predictor of championship success on a national level. Because of this, I want to research the question, what exactly is it that composes this concept of athletic institutional reputation? Then I want to go into not only what composes it, but also how much of an effect it may have on the performance of a team at the national championships, which is my original question. Um, there are some limitations to go over before I start, though. Um, so I first had a small population size, which meant it was hard to find statistical significance. I have a population of 49 teams who competed last year, and with 11 teams who I was able to collect data from, I did not encounter high p-values, but I did have 22% of the population represented in my data which is pretty good. Um, another reputation is that I am not reviewing women in my study because that's double everything. It's a completely different competition field. So I, this is limited to men's swimming, although there might be some things that can carry over to women's swimming. This is specifically with men. The last uh, limitation that's most evident here is um, applicability. Uh, to illustrate this uh, limitation, I know it's not very uh, clear image, but if you look at this guy, this is the best swimmer in all of college, and I can guarantee you not a single one of you knows his name. If this was a sport like football or basketball, you would all know exactly who this is, but you don't, because it's swimming. It's a very niche sport. Um, so because of that, my results, whatever I find, is not gonna be as applicable as they would be if I had studied a more mainstream, uh, broadly accessible, more popular sport. So some literature, there's a couple sources that really helped me with my research. First was from uh, Doyon Wan and his colleague Pakianathan Shayaduri, who provide a super helpful background for my research. They set out to understand why some college programs are achieving competitive success, not just in swimming but in, in any sport, and why others aren't, even if they both have even if they both have similar tangible resources like a good amount of money. Um, so for that reason, they investigate uh, intangible resources, which they consider to be things such as reputation, and they use a correlational study, which I did as well. They helped me because they first showed me that what I know whatever results I find should indicate that athletic reputation does, in fact, quite highly influence the athletic performance that I, that I end up measuring. But while his correlation, while their correlation helps me decide on a method, um, and his results provide groundwork for what I should be working for, his method for determining it doesn't really help me because his definition of an athletic reputation is the reputation of a school as a whole, not of an individual sport at that school. So while his research allowed me in the end to say, look, I found results that line up with his, I can't, I need to find more literature that provides a strong basis in data points um, that compose athletic reputation, not just summing the number of national championships, which is what he did. And I did find a study that helped me. Um, a Rutgers professor named D. Randall Smith did a similar study where he examined the athletic success as an influence on enrollment yield uh, from 94 to 2014. Uh, what he did, he set out to determine how much of an effect reputation has uh, on matriculation at the more competitive NCAA uh, D1 schools, again using a correlational method. 
What he found in one sentence was that uh, if a school's team does well, then talented students' matriculation should increase by about 8% the next year. What this means for me is that if a school has a great athletic reputation from one year, it should result in an even better season the next year. Uh, another thing that Smith did, which gave me great legitimacy, was to define the athletic reputation of a school's football and basketball teams, and I end up modeling my own system in part after his, which I'll go over in the methods section. Um, so what is so great about Smith for me is that he does two things that really allow me to do more. So he uses different factors for each sport, right? Uh, he uses X for football and Y for basketball, which lets me use Z for swimming. But if he just uses X for basketball and X for football, and if I don't have a comparable metric for swimming, then I'm stuck. But he uses different ones, which allows me to model that and use different ones for my sport. He also, to come up with his, uh, with his quantified athletic reputation, simply just sums each numerical value for each data point, instead of weighting some data to create more scores biased towards a certain data point. So to create my scale, ensuring that each data point was based in academic uh, rationale, I quantified each of these four factors that you see here on the screen. So the first was uh, meet performance during the 21 to 22 season, um, which is essentially regular season games um, for swimming. Second, the conference championships from that season, which is as close to a postseason as swimming gets. Third, uh, I used the cumulative survey score um, from the survey that I sent to the coaches from these more elite teams. And this survey includes data on how much time they spent in the, in the water every week, or maybe how much of an emphasis their team puts on diet or weight training. And lastly, I have a professional metric in here from the College Swimming and Diving Coaches Association of America, because it was comparable to a metric that Professor Smith used. So in summary, I want to get a numerical value for athletic reputation and primarily correlate that with the 2022 championship placement. Together my results, I did six correlations. The first two were to more broadly look at how successful my research was compared to professionals. And the other four, uh, sorry, the first one was to, to broadly look at that. And the other four were actually looking at my research question. Um, my first correlation was between, oh shoot, was between athletic reputation as I defined it and the professional reputation as college coaches defined it, which was done to, I just did that to add legitimacy to my scale. Because if my numbers align very closely with the numbers published by the guys who get paid to do it, that shows that what I'm finding isn't just random. What I got was a correlation of 0.674, which is not quite the mark of 0.7 of a strong correlation, but it's still a moderately moderate correlation. And in any case, it shows that I've produced a scale that's just relatively accurate as far as being parallel to professional estimates. So here's what all my research came down to, the big test. Uh, Primary, the primary correlation. Um, does my scale, is my scale worth its salt? To my dismay, it, it's not quite. Um, here the correlation coefficient was 0.525, which admittedly is uh, just barely moderate, but it shows that my scale does produce moder moderately accurate results, um, not perfect. As you can see on my graph here, though the two teams that I collected data from that performed the best were the two teams that were some of the closest ones to the line of best fit. So what I want to look into for the rest of my research is why is it that uh, I found a system that works well for the highest achievers, but not as great for those who maybe just barely made the cut down here. Um, that's one of the things that I'll talk about from here. Uh, one of the factors that I added is strength and conditioning. This is something that I did because um, I wanted to test for more niche factors in uh, college swimming. Uh, more niche than the question of did you win your games? Like, how are you preparing for those games as well? Uh, and that's how I justify including this factor and the next two. Um, this information is not necessarily going to be shouted from the rooftops because it's just a, like it's something that only the guys who are actually in the water are going to be uh, paying attention to. Um, so I want to see if this aspect of a more private reputation that the guys who are in the know, so to speak, know about, uh, has any effect on national success. What I found is first, that strength and conditioning contributes really almost nothing. I got a correlation constant uh, coefficient of 0.108. Um, I found a similar trend with diet here where it produced a coefficient of negative 0.025. And the real shocker came with practice length. 
which was a negative 0.384, which is even a moderate negative correlation. Um, and furthermore, again, it's negative. So I want to understand with my research, why is it that the swimming teams who are scoring higher at regular season games and are having a generally more uh, higher reputation are performing so well in the national championship, but the way that teams are preparing for any competition is a very bad predictor of their success, right? Remember on this slide, it's negative almost 0.4, which is a moderate negative one, the correlation. So at first I had the thought uh, that programs have become so, so standardized that uh, there, there are these more privately reputable factors and they're, not, they're simply just not distinguishing anymore. But the answer that I found comes uh, again from this uh, professor's study. In the study, one of the things he showed, if you remember, was that uh, if a team performs well one year, they should, they should receive up to about 8% more talented student athletes the following year. So therefore, my athletic reputation factors that derive from this work correspond well with this statement. Um, but my added factors don't because maybe there's just not enough data to explain how this more private reputation might impact the national championships. And the explanation then is just rather simple, and that's that what has more of an effect on collegiate success is that more long-term athletic reputation because there's 8% more the next year, not necessarily during that same year though. So what I measured is the athletic reputation from just one year, and it seems to be not as good of a predictor as the year-over-year-over-year -over -year -over -year reputation. Um, wrapping up, I'll go over some of my findings. So again, I conducted five correlations to examine the accuracy and the validity of athletic reputation as I defined it, and I tested whether it was a good predictor of national championship success in college swimming. Um, my first correlation between my athletic reputation scale and professional reputation as defined by college coaches was 0.674, indicating that my scale was relatively accurate. And again, and, and um, uh, my scale was only moderately accurate though uh, when I was predicting national championship success uh, because I got a correlation coefficient of 0.525. And the factors that I added proved not to have as high of uh, an effect or maybe a correlation as the as the factors that I derived from literature. Um, uh, sorry. I found, though, remember, that these factors, the reason they did not significantly contribute to success um, is because they're not a long-term effect. Uh, it's just what they're doing during that year to prepare. And so the answer then comes from the more long-term athletic reputation, which was, in the end, a better predictor of success although my assigned athletic reputation from the one-year study was still a good predictor of success at the national championships.